What are you doing? So welcome to another lockdown edition of Bike Fit Tuesdays. While filming the last episode, it dawned on me that this saddle has a massive, massive cutout in it. We're gonna discuss why saddles have massive cutouts in them. What does it do? Do you need one? You take this seriously, please. The concept of a pressure relief channel is to, <laughs> funnily enough, relieve pressure. But we're looking at relieving pressure from sensitive areas, usually the perineum, uh, to reduce the likelihood of genital numbness and discomfort. The perineum is an area of soft tissue between your legs. I'm a firm believer in pressure relief channels on saddles. On the grounds that, as a human being, you are not intended to sit on your genitals on a hard piece of foam. The concept of a pressure relief channel is, is to relieve that soft tissue and then and provide a, ba a greater engagement with the skeleton. Uh, now, it's worth noting that uh, all saddles that possess pressure relief channels, well, in fact, all saddles full stop, are intended to be sat on symmetrically. One of the reasons why that might be bigger than, than other pressure relief channels is because the larger the pressure relief channel, uh, the higher likelihood there is of the rider actually hitting it. I mean, so for example, if you consider that human being is an asymmetrical entity, um, and a bicycle is a very symmetrical piece of equipment. They don't necessarily always interact with one another in exactly the fashion that perhaps manufacturers intended them to. So with a larger pressure relief channel, if you've got a rider that sits rotated or slightly lists to one side, they potentially have higher likelihood of hitting that pressure relief channel, i.e. relieving the pressure in areas that are needed, rather than actually developing numbness or something like that. So what about saddle? like this. It doesn't have a pressure relief channel at all. It's got a kind of dent towards the back. I don't even know if you're going to sit on that bit. It's been designed for a reason that people use them. I feel like this saddle's sort of designed with tradition in mind more than anything else. And to be honest, I, I, I quite like fabric saddles. I get on, uh, I, I, I sell a reasonable amount of them. Um, saddles like this tend to work best for riders who can't ride a saddle with a pressure relief channel. So if you have someone who is pelvically disorientated, like they have a, a rotation in their pelvis, they have a lateral pelvic tilt, uh, then they are not going to necessarily sit on a saddle squarely. And the problem with saddles like this, it relies upon the rider sitting on it pretty symmetrically in order for it to offer you any form of comfort. If that cannot occur due to a rider's physiological restrictions or limitations, then something like this tends to offer slightly better relief because you can interact with it asymmetrically. That being said, in, in a bike fit scenario, I almost always try to get someone sat on a, on a saddle squarely, not always achievable, but on the grounds that when you, inter when you, when you interact with a saddle asymmetrically, it usually creates um, a much, much higher likelihood of saddle sores. So the single most common cause for saddle sores are, is a poor interaction with the saddle. Rather than necessarily cleanliness or short fit, I mean cleanliness and short fit are absolutely um, things to be taken into consideration. They absolutely will influence saddle sores, but the, the major driver really is actually an asymmetrical interaction, which is why you always get saddle sores in the same place, on the same side. So I know that I sit a little bit wonky on the bike. Is the reason I find this saddle more comfortable than my other ones, because the channel is so big, Probably. For exactly the reason we discussed a minute ago, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it might be that you do, because you do sit a little bit skew, um, that you know, you're, it's also a little bit more slender than the saddles you've been riding historically. And you know, you're a slender guy, so, I mean, well, these are like 135 mil wide, whereas I think historically you've ridden 143 Roman. You know, having something that's eight millimeters narrower may absolutely uh, improve things for you. Would it be fair to recommend that someone having issues their saddle, try something out with a bigger pressure relief before going straight to something with out of pressure relief whatsoever. I think that the nature of people's saddle problems is almost always nothing to do with the saddle itself. This is a funny thing to say, but saddle discomfort has nothing to do with saddles. It's almost exclusively to do with how the rider's interacting with it. The two most common traits that we see in riders' positions through here that contribute to saddle problems are excessive saddle height, because the rider usually lists to one side, which creates this asymmetrical interaction, or, and or, uh, excessive reach. 
which results in the rider gravitating to the nose of the saddle to reduce the reach because people positionally self-select and they sit on the narrowest portion of the saddle. Uh, and that again will cause you saddle problems. So I, I think that you know saddles get a really bad rap. Uh, people people will say, oh, you know, I tried a specialized toupee, for example, which is a saddle I've been riding, I've ridden thousands of miles and never had problems with. And you know, they say, oh, it's like a razor blade. Well, it's not. It's it's quite a good saddle. It's just to do with the fact that you've probably got a shit position. Um, so there aren't really any bad saddles per se. I mean, even from the dreaded F brand. Uh, can I say that? Yeah, I guess I can, can't I? Um, you know, if, if it works for you, it works for you. But I think one thing that, one myth I think we ought to dispel is that you can probably ride a multitude of different saddles. I think guys come in here and they've got like a crate of saddles, they spend a thousand pounds on saddles, and they come in and plonk it down, and they go, right, which of these is gonna work best for me? And the answer is probably all of them. So, you, I mean, I can, I, I've got five bikes with five different saddles on it, and you know, I can ride all of them with a, you know, a reasonable degree of comfort. So I, I don't think that the, the myth is that you know saddles are really specific to an individual. It's not. A bike fit is, you know, and your position is very specific to the individual, but saddle selection isn't. You know, to be honest with you, most of them are kind of the same thing anyway. I mean, if you look at, hang on a minute. If you consider that, so this is my old toupee off of, I think it's off my autumn. Um, which is actually it's one of my favourite saddles, but I am also riding a Pro Griffin, and I'm not being funny. There isn't really a massive difference between the two. I mean, sat on them, I can't tell the difference. You know, Bontrager makes a saddle called a Montrose, very, very similar to this. Uh, I mean, and, and actually, the, at the moment, I mean, I, I'm not a specialised dealership, so I don't sell specialised saddles, but uh, this is our best-selling saddle. It's nice and flat. It's got reasonable pressure relief channel, and it's it's flat both in um, this plane, but also in this plane, which I quite like in the sense that it doesn't tend to pitch rides into the front of it. One of the issues we found the Roman, which is a very popular saddle, um, is that the way that it kicks up at the back can have a tendency of throwing the rider into the front of the bike. Not always, but, but sometimes. So moral of the story here, check your saddle height first. It's not always gonna be your saddle causing the issue. I think when you consider that, for example, we've been able to prove uh, through using pressure mapping that things like cleat setback, stance width, handlebar drop, all have massive ramifications in saddles. I mean, I think the, 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 the resounding um, point of this should be, it's down to your position rather than down to, um, down to a saddle itself. Saddle discomfort doesn't come from saddles, it comes from elsewhere. Excessive reach, excessive saddle height, insufficient stance, excessive stance, not enough arch support. I mean, we found, you know, even uh, using like a G8 footbed, we've been able to reduce pressure going through the saddle by up to 50%, which is a massive number. So, you know, I, I think the saddle discomfort isn't as simple as, uh, as just moving, you know, endlessly trying to replace the saddle and find the perfect saddle. There are probably a number of saddles out there for you. It's really down to bad positioning. So there you go, just shows again, uh, it's always important to check the rest of your position, not necessarily the one component you think it might be. As usual, links down below if you wanna check out James's shop, if you wanna support him through the online store. Any bike fit related questions you have, put them down below and we'll do our best to answer them. And thank you for watching.